I'm Troy, man. Troy Hunt. Call me Troy the Barber. So it was pretty much easy, man. Like, I'm, I'm a tie to young man, man. I just started out was, I started a barber shop called Remedies, man. My cousin was working with uh, with these guys, a group of cats at uh, the spot called Prestige. He, he was cleaning up, running the store, and things of that nature for, uh, for the shop. So he wanted to leave. Yeah, I guess he wanted to get a different type of job. So what I did was he offered me that job. So I got with them, a few entrepreneurs inside uh, Prestige said they were gonna go out and get their own shop. So I went with these brothers, man. So I, during the top process of the time that I'm over there, I said, uh, let me pick up uh, pick up this little skill, see if I could try it. So I had a few master barbers like Kamal, Kamal Nuru, uh, Denny Moe, uh, Edgar, Larry, Twan, they all, you know, they, they were showing me the ropes. So from that point on, I've been cutting. Alright, so I've been around these brothers since I was nine. I might have picked those clippers up roughly when I turned about 15. Yeah, about 15. So I got about 32 now, so I got 17 years in this. Right, east side of Harlem is rough, man. So you gotta know how to really get in here and get your money and get on your grind. The, working at that first level, which was the first one opened up, the, the, the class of brothers in that shop was a lot different than what we got now. It's a lot of younger, younger guys, younger generation here, so. Me coming from, from that era and being in the barbershop setting was a lot different. You know, everybody respected each other's craft, respected each other's clientele, they respected everybody's work ethics, everything. Being cut in the jungle, which is the east side of Harlem, and this level, it's like, if you don't got your clientele locked in, your clientele can, your, your clientele can get scooped up from you. And you know, you gotta be serious about it. Everybody, you know, the younger cats, they don't really take the same love to it as they as we did back then and whatnot, man. Like, you know, as far as the times and settings that you're getting into work, it's, it's just all disarray, man. So, you know, it's just different, man. Cuts have changed completely nowadays. You know, I come from the blowout of it, man. So, that's a cut that I have under my belt that a lot of the new day barbers nowadays, they don't even know where to start that. So, it's a, it's a big difference. The clientele, you know, my clientele I've had 17 years more, man. I, you know, I, I was cutting in any and everywhere, man. So I, I, I built a rapport with my clientele. Clientele nowadays here on the east side, it's more like, I, right, I'm gonna go to whoever if I can, you know what I mean? So it's a little difference, man. I keep, I keep my clientele and I'm, I'm more intertwined in my clients' lives or whatever. I'm, you know, baby showers and, and, and birthdays and all kind of events that I make sure I get to to give back to them for coming to give to me. So a lot of the barbers don't, nowadays don't, don't understand that you have to give back to your clientele in order to keep them as your clientele because the minute they, get, they see something, they get something different that they not getting from their barber, that's where things change, you know? Feel like this, man, all my clients to me is very important, man. So I treat them, I treat them accordingly. I noticed that working with uh, the brother Ed, that which I might have met too, he gave me the essence of this for years, man, as being one of the first barbers over there in Levels, man. So he has a very, very unique clientele. Just, he's just a dedicated, loyal client. He's here on time every day, and that's what he provides for his clients. You know? Kenny, who's also part of the VIP, he's cutting basketball stars to, you know, pretty much everybody. So. The way he treats his clientele the same way, it all kind of fell in place for us to call ourselves the VIP of the shop. You know, the other cats that's in the shop, they all got their different ways and different times and settings. The four of us, we in here every morning, at the same time, we eat together, we get money together, and we damn near leave the shop together. So, that's how we came up with that, man. And then our clientele all inter intertwines and, you know, mingles with each other because we have a certain rapport with all of our clientele as, as, as the four horsemen, you know? We use the word supervise doesn't do that. Uh, or somebody that's had so many years, I guess, even cutting here, shouldn't want to walk in. Purposely. You've been cutting here a long certain amount of time of years, your clientele should direct new clients to you, not you trying to get a walk in. You know what I mean? It's things in the shop that's, that as a manager, as a supervisor, don't do. So I don't really call him a manager, a supervisor. He's another co-worker to me. He's good with his people. He's not good with all people. So you can't supervise everything and everybody that comes to the shop. You have to have that rapport. You gotta have that, that kind of respect as a supervisor that have the same respect that you, you, de you demand. He don't, you know, he got this like, it's me, me, me attitude, man, which is, you know, that's, you know, works for him, man. It just don't work for everybody for you to be a supervisor. Your attitude as a person, if you're gonna be a supervisor, has to be able to be fit in everybody's lives that you're around. That's where the VIP comes in play because we keep our clientele, because I can mingle and interact with all 
my clientele and people that's just in the shop, period. Him on the other hand, he rubs a lot of people wrong or whatever, so the word supervisor doesn't really fit. Good barber, excellent barber, man. You know what I mean? Kid is kid, he does, you know, he's reaching heights as far as his barber world that a lot of people have, and a lot of people not that, you know, that focused on, but as a supervisor of multiple things and people, he doesn't really got that, man. There's tissue need to be in the shop, there's soap, there's lights busted out, it's, you know, it's, it's conflict of interest in the way, you know, he deals with a lot of the, a lot of the other barbers, you know. It's, it's just, you know, he, he, he'd be good by himself, though. That was a that was a bad business uh, proposition. I took uh, I took the likings to a brother that uh, came to me with an idea, and I said, you know what? I think I can excel this way. I can I can I can move up in the world in general. You know what I mean? Provide more for my family. So I took it. And the process of that I don't think everybody is can do business together. You know. And me going over there, a lot of a lot of our ideas clashed. There was a lot of you know, folks he moving around that that didn't go right. You know, where at that point in time, if I don't see the same vision, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move forward with that person. We got in order for me to do things and move on and in life with anybody, we gotta have the same vision for each other or the same vision moving forward. If you don't have it with that that particular person, then you'll never work in business, man. Love my kids, man. <laughs> um, I've, been, I've done it all, man. I don't been into BMX, and, man. I don't bikes, and, you know, of course, basketball, things of that nature, man. Um, I like writing, reading, you know, all the basic stuff and whatnot, man. I'm a, I'm like a tourist in my own city nowadays, man. So I noticed that in New York, I haven't been everywhere. So one of my hobbies is every day, my, my Sundays and Mondays off, man. I make sure I get up and I really go walk around New York City to see what I have, what's changed, what I haven't seen, because you know, being with in this world. In this particular career, we kind of stuck in one spot for the majority of the day. So, so much changes daily, man, that, you know, as I got, you know, as my daughter gets older, I want to be able to, hey, I don't ever want to be like, well, I didn't know that. I've never seen that. You know, I want to be like, oh, yeah, I know where that's at. Come on, let's go there. So, I'm noticing that's my new hobby, man, traveling, man. Pops and moms, man, they, they actually, since before moms and pops, man, they, uh, Grandparents, they was in the dry cleaning. Grandparents was into dry cleaning. My grandparents' grandparents were in the dry cleaning. So business has been in our blood, man. My pops opened up a few uh, dry cleaners. I ran them, you know, I ran them with them and uh, got a liking to the business. After a certain time, I picked up the Clippers. I kind of fell, like, straight away from a little bit. I said, you know, this is dad's dream. This wasn't really mine, which I think nowadays as I get older, I should have just held more, um, held on to it more just as a, as a pinnacle to the family, like this is what's been going on, which is still not too late, man. I'm, I'm gonna get back into it, me and dad reconnect and start talking a little more about him, opening something up. He's getting older, so I'm gonna try to put him in a position where he can put his feet up in and uh, keep still for a little while, man. But um, it's dry cleaning been in our business for years, man.